So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll get started right now. Um, friends, guests, commuters, uh, welcome tonight to tonight's candidate forum for District 6 seat for the BART board. Uh, my name is David Sorrell. I'm a board member at Seamless Bay Area and an Alameda County resident in unincorporated Ashland, uh, despite the fact that Bay Fair is my personal home stop. I will be your host tonight. Uh, just as an overview, this November 8th, multiple BART board positions will be on the ballot. These individuals will have an influential role to play in improving transit access, rider equity, seamlessness, and green sustainable transportation across the Bay Area. On November 8th, BART board districts two, four, and eight, where the incumbents are running unopposed. Tonight, tonight's forum will focus on the race for district six, which includes Fremont, South Hayward, Union City, and Warm Springs, which has multiple candidates running. We are proud to welcome tonight District 6 BART Board candidates Liz Ames and Lance Nashahira, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, um, for tonight's conversation. I would like for you guys to welcome Liz and Lance tonight. Uh, before we get started, we would like to note that Shyam Chital is also running for the seat. However, did not accept our invitation for tonight's forum. So tonight's conversation is proudly co-hosted by Seamless Bay Area, East Bay Transit Riders Union, Transport Oakland, Spur, Bike East Bay, Fremont for Everyone, Streets for People, and East Bay Yimby. All of us are committed to transparency and conducting candidate forums. During this event, we'll be working from an agreed upon list of questions. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. And if I have any follow-up questions, candidates will have more time uh, to provide addi additional context. We will be saving time at the end of the hour for audience Q&A. So between now and hopefully towards the end of the event, please enter your questions for the candidates into the Zoom Q&A tool at any time during the event. We will aim to get through as many of your questions as we can, but we likely will not be able to ask every one. Uh, we also might edit or combine some questions to save time. Lastly, uh, this is a nonpartisan informational event meant to acquaint you with the candidates and issues of importance in this race. The member organizations will be sharing additional information on this race after tonight's event. In order to stay in touch, please make sure to connect with today's event's co-host by joining their mailing list or following them on social media. We'll be able to post everyone's websites in the chat, mainly because there's a lot of them. And lastly, I would like to note that this event is being recorded and will be posted publicly after the event. With that in mind, I would like to introduce and invite Liz and Lance uh, to each provide a brief one minute introduction of themselves. After that, we'll jump into our conversation. So Liz, if you will, the floor is yours. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. I am a licensed civil engineer. I worked in Palo Alto for almost 30 years. I developed infrastructure plan for the city for a 25 year capital outlay, addressing the maintenance backlog, and also um, just the capital planning for, you know, parks, streets, buildings um, for 25 years. So with that experience, I'm actually uniquely qualified to look at the planning, the design, the construction of projects for BART because they have a billion dollars worth of projects typically every year. And also I've been a super commuter and I understand uh, the need for a job housing balance and trying to get housing closer to your job would reduce your time and commute. So I'm focused on that and transforming the rider experience, improving it also with additional public safety. I'm very concerned about the rider experience and the safety perception of our transit system. So I'd like to build ridership and I am uniquely qualified. Oh, thank you. My time is up. I didn't notice. Thank you so much. Thank you for the cue. <laughs> thank, thank you, Liz. Uh, Lance, to you, sir. Yes, uh, my name is Lance Nishihira. I've lived in the Tri-City area pretty much my whole life. 
Um, I have been an active uh, transit commuter since 2005. Uh, I, so I haven't had a whole, I haven't had a solo commute for several, several years. This gives me uh, a, a different type of qualification. And the qualification is that I center very, I, I focus very uh, clearly on the writer's uh, user experience. Uh, in, my, in my day job, I am a, I, I, I lead a tech team, I'm a director of user experience for a Fortune 500 company. So I'm very familiar with understanding experience flows, understanding um, customer journeys and, and, and that. Uh, and so, but I think the, the unique perspective that I bring uh, is that I, uh, I, I am a writer, an everyday writer. Prior to COVID, I was taking uh, uh, BART Union City to Embarcadero every day. Uh, and I know like seven different ways to get to my San Jose campus. So, uh, so I, I'm uniquely qualified in that I, I, I sit on those seats and I go through those turnstiles every day. Uh, I'm also a qualified uh, um, public servant knowing how to serve on a board. So thank you very much. Perfect, thank you very much, sir. Um, and now we'll start the hard questions uh, with Liz. Um, could you be able to describe what is your favorite District 6 BART stop and why? <laughs> My favorite, oh, to walk? Did you, uh, doesn't, doesn't matter, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. My favorite, okay. My favorite, um, my favorite BART stop, I would say, I would, I, I wish it was Union City, that's my town, but it's Central Fremont. Um, because Central Fremont really has a lot of opportunity. There's shopping, there's jobs there, the hospitals are there. I feel like it's a more engaging stop. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing a downtown actually at the down at Fre Central Fremont. So I think that perspective of just trying to get the live work play concept which is what i'm advocating for live closer to your place where you live and where you work and where you can recreate so i think central fremont has a lot to offer as far as activities you should do thank you all right thank you very much lance your favorite district six all stop. right i'm gonna have to say um uh Berryessa. And the reason why it, it, it was Berryessa is because I've been waiting so long for it. Uh, I, I actually remember uh, hearing updates and I actually signed up for the mailing list uh, because that was actually on the set. Uh, so my, my office, my everyday office, I've got two offices. Uh, well, I had two offices prior to COVID, but now that I have one office uh, in, uh, in North San Jose. And I've been waiting for a, a very long time for that to open. And I gotta say, it it doesn't disappoint because it connects me to everything I need to get to, uh, all the uh, all the way from uh, all the way to work to uh, San Jose Library to downtown San Jose. Um, I, I I I tend to take my uh, go take the train to uh, go with my daughter who's who's a who's a Spartan in San Jose, uh, San Jose State. Uh, we we go to, so it's a connector for me to all. It's it's like the closest downtown. Um, that I um, that we have access to, so I'd have to go with Berryessa. Wonderful, thank you very much. So our next question is in terms of accessibility, and uh, we'll start with you, Lance. Uh, what would BART need to do uh, to become truly accessible to people with disabilities, and how would you think, or what would you do to achieve it? Yeah, accessibility is, first of all, you know, we have to make sure that we have multiple redundancies on our, um, on our elevators. Uh, for example, I, I mean, I hear all the time about, about elevator outages. Uh, that's one thing. When you think about, um, uh, when you think about signage, I think uh, we, we should probably conduct an audit to make sure um, that, um, uh, that our wayfinding mechanisms are not, are not solely uh, vision based. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we should have Braille access to uh, any of the small signage that requires, you know, um, uh, sites. Um, but I would, I would, I would argue, and, and maybe this work has already been done. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, having an accessibility audit and getting a, you know, because I, I unfortunately don't know all the uh, the the um, uh, the specifics of our current ADA status. Per, 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 perhaps Director Ames does. Um, but I would love to ha have an ADA audit and see if there's a list of recommendations so that we can figure out how to get those into the in, into the backlog. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, Liz. Yeah, I have a lot of ideas on this. I actually focused on Union City Station because it wasn't accessible. There was a lot of traffic 
uh, pedestrian bike traffic going around the station because it wasn't opened on both sides. The east side is not open. There's a railroad track there. And so I was a proponent of pushing to get the finally the Union City East Side Station opened. So we improved that on the BART end and we're waiting for the city of Union City to do an at grade crossing. So that would provide, provide a unique promenade, pedestrian bike promenade east and west of the Union City Station, which is huge. I mean, it's a huge barrier. People going around the station, I've almost, you know, well, I've seen people almost get into accidents on Dakota Road and then to try to go around the station. And then finally, um, I'd safe routes to BART a program which Fremont did to provide a bike and pedestrians on a raised elevated platform gets people to transit that makes it more accessible uh, to the stations. Excellent, thank you. And Liz, um, go to you for the next question. Uh, what actions do you believe that BART should be taking to let riders and operators feel safe uh, from a public health and safety perspective? So, okay, so this is a big push I did for the last four years is having people feel safe on the, in the trains and in the stations. So I proposed like this police presence to know your officer, like a beat cop, you know the officer's name, there's a presence there. Also with the system service workers and just people that are cleaning the stations, they're out there on the platforms and, and you feel safe that there's, there's someone around in case there's a problem. And also what I did is I spearheaded the um, fair gate installations to harden the system, prevent fair evasion. There is a perception of fair evaders creating this lawlessness on the trains. It may not be totally proven that a person that fair evaded created, you know, committed a crime. But I think when, after talking to the station agents and the passengers, they really wanted to secure the system. So I did an opinion piece on this. And sure enough, the reporters cut wind of this and said, the, the writers said they wanted a fair gate system. And now that's a BART priority. That was done in 20, 2019. And hopefully we're gonna be finishing this. It's like a five-year program. So we hope to enclose the elevators and do the gates and people will feel safe, I think, with that kind of program. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, terrific. Lance, uh, what, what actions do you believe BART should be taking from a, uh, from a safety perspective? Well, from, from where I am right now, I, I think there, there's there's the uh, there's actual safety and perceived safety. Both of them are extremely important, um, especially as it relates to ridership and the level of ridership. Uh, what I would say is that people generally want to feel safe uh, by having some type of uniform personnel on the train, and they want to be able to uh, you know they they want to be able to just know that there's somebody on the train in case anything in, in case anything um, goes uh, goes sideways. Now that doesn't necessarily need to be a sworn officer with uh, with a badge and a gun. Uh, right now, there is the you know there is the um, ambassador program, uh, the the Progressive Policing Bureau, um, and I and I would continue to support that. Though uh, one of the things that I would want to do uh, as I as I be, as I um, get on the board was to figure out kind of what are the success metrics. How do we know if it's working? You know, perception is a is a difficult thing to uh, measure. But I'd really want to make sure that if the more we invest in that program, uh, that it's having the desired effect on perception and 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 volume of ridership. Well, thank you very much for your answer. Um, and Lance, we'll go to you for the next question. Um, in so we mentioned earlier, it was mentioned earlier about um, fair policy in terms of you know fair jumping and things like that. Uh, what do you think about current BART fair policies, fair levels? Um, and do you think, if at all, should be changed? Um, well, I mean, I think right now there, there are a few programs out, out there, you know, because affordability, affordability of, of, of BART ridership is, uh, or, uh, of BART, uh, is actually at the edge. Like, I think it's, it's, it's at the edge of where most people can afford. I, mean, I, I gave you an anecdote earlier about my daughter, uh, my, my daughter Bella, um, telling me it takes $12 a day. Um, and, and for a college student, that's kind of tough. Um, but you know, with the uh, and with, with the clipper structure in place, uh, we have the ability to slice and dice and have you know have uh, more targeted fair structures. Uh, I'd be um, I'd be supportive of exploring uh, if we have all the fair structures and what those fair structures and qualifications could be or should be for the different populations. Really, I believe that our emphasis should be on getting as many people on BART as possible. 
Uh, of course, we want to stay revenue positive, and because that's a huge part of our revenue. Um, but looking at you know looking at the end game, the end game is to get uh, is to get cars off the road and people in the trains because everybody wins. And Liz, um, if you believe that uh, fair policies, what do they? What do you believe in now? What do you think that should be changed? Well, I think there needs to be reform. I have to say that. The distance-based fare is not very successful. You know, there's not a lot of people that took transit before the pandemic, and now we have telecommuting. So we really need to change uh, the fare program. And I really like what Seamless, I think Seamless Ferry came up with this. Um, it's very detailed, geography-based. And I do think we need to really reinvent the fare program where you can have geography-based, like different zones, the one program where you're basically reducing the fare and you're increasing their ability to, to ride multiple places. So this could be a daily fare program, a weekly program, and a monthly program. I think unlimited rides, and I think we should pilot this aggressively because we are in a ridership crisis. And this is the time to experiment. This is the time to design, to design thinking around fare programs. Um, so I'm hopeful that we can work with you and our partners, funding partners, to do something very innovative and to get and you know get the students like you know what Lance is saying, get the students, get the seniors, get more ridership. That's this is what's going to make transit thrive. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Uh, so, and and we'll start with Liz on this next question. Um, do you believe that the BART district sufficiently listens uh, to writer input in decision making? Uh, what systematic changes would you institute to improve this if that's not the case? Well, this is a very good question because I do talk to station agents. I talk to the staff. I even talk to the outgoing police chief and ask the police chief, what would be the safety improvements that you would like to see on BART? And that's how I found out we should be securing our Coliseum and Bayfair elevators. <laughs> I know, David, I think you use Bayfair. So that came up in a conversation one-on-one -on -one with the outgoing police chief. And this is what drove me to, to basically push for a fair gate system. I heard it on multiple levels. The other thing that I heard from the system service workers, and this is writing the BART system throughout the whole, or, you know, through three counties, um, actually it was four counties. I found out that we should be instituting the scrub crews. We should be cleaning our stations more. We should be power washing our stations. And this also was a, a problem with, for the service workers, they were getting injuries, they were mopping the stairs. I said, we need to get the power washing back. And this has happened gradually. And I think this is what we need to change. I think we need to start, talk to the frontline workers and get ideas from the frontline workers. It's, it's, a, it's all there, they have a lot of ideas and we can implement them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lance. Yeah, I, I think this is an area of strength for me. I mean, coming from my background um, in design, usually, you know, it always starts off with conversations with the end users. Um, and so um, there are, you know, I, I, I've done it at, uh, you know, in, in my current role as a school board trustee. I mean, I'm famous for uh, you know, going to schools and actually, you know, talking to students, asking them how things are going. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I heard very clearly in my, you know, at, at the high school that, at one of the high schools was, oh my, and this is, this is very, very, um, um, it, was, it was very common, is the bathrooms at this high school are just a mess. They were, you know, and it just took some conversations um, and, you um, uh, you know, we had some deferred maintenance budget. And so we, at the high school, we, we renovated all the bathrooms. Uh, but really it just takes uh, somebody listening, not just listening, but also saying, all right, how do we work with staff to prioritize this, to get this work prioritized? Now, if school district is a little bit different, I think I'd probably have to do, do things a little bit differently at BART, but it's, you know, you listen up and, and, and then you distill what, what's needed and you, you know, you, you talk to staff about it. All right, thank you very much. So um, again, attendees, uh, make sure that you, uh, you know, submit additional questions for the candidates in the Zoom Q&A tool. Um, I do have a follow-up question and this came from the Q&A box. And um, the question was posed about restrooms on at BART stations and what your opinion of 
or what is your opinion on the on the need and of the facilities at the BART stations? Um, Liz, if you can be able to provide a quick uh, statement on what you believe and what you think that could improve. Well, I, you know, because I'm talking to passengers, I actually saw a passenger at Lake Merritt just needed to go to the bathroom so bad. She was going to, she was in pain. And I talked to the station agent. I said, please, you know, she needs to, she needs help. And he uh, opened up his own, I guess they have their own, right? They have their own break room, restrooms. So she used that. So I, I really, truly believe we need to open up the restrooms. This is like a civil rights issue. <laughs> um, and I saw it firsthand. And I, I think this is, this, you know, and of course we need to clean the stations and clean, you know, the bathrooms as much as possible, but they really need to be open to the public and not, you know, not, a, you know, if somebody needs to use the bathroom and they, and they didn't pay, they should be able to use the bathroom, use the restrooms. It's just, it, it's just really a civil rights matter. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Lance, your, your thoughts. Yeah, I, I agree with Liz. I think, I think Liz is, is spot on. I've actually been the customer who landed in Barcadero and had to find a bathroom and at the, and it was out. And then I got outside in the, you know, in, in the, in the streets. And if you don't know this, there's not really a lot of, at least at the time, there wasn't a lot of public bathrooms. So I do really feel like it is a, it is a fundamental human right. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it becomes a matter of figuring out how to get that done, how to work with our, with our staff. Uh, one of the things that I did at, um, at you know, it, at the school district, uh, was also uh, related to the bathrooms issue is I have staff actually uh, create QR codes and post them up in the in all the bathrooms to say, hey, if this bathroom ever needs any type of attention, you know, scan this QR code, uh, fill out a quick form. And sometimes it's just as simple as, hey, I need some toilet paper or we're out of paper towels or something like that. But people can't, uh, you know, uh, you know, people have to know about it. And that system has to be worked through the workflow system. So uh, yes, absolutely more, more bathrooms and they should be open and clean. Thank you very much. And, um, you know, and I think one of the most important effective tools that BART could very well do uh, as we evolve in the post pandemic world is uh, encouraging development nearer transit. Um, and I'll start with you, Lance. What do you see as the most important consequences of having more uh, development near the BART stations? Oh gosh, I mean, this is actually, uh, Liz and I actually, I think we probably both agree on the same, uh, on this, um, that uh, transit-oriented development is a must. I mean, we have to stop rolling out these huge mega mansion, you know, low density houses all over the place. Like we should focus development. Yeah, I do, I do a fair amount of travel uh, to Europe uh, for, for business. And, to, and for me, that's the vision of having, having everything close and walkable. Um, so it would be a high priority for me uh, to ensure that transit-oriented development is prioritized, both on and off BART land, right? And, you know, right now, uh, BART uh, is, is currently um, you know, um, uh, exploring uh, quite a bit of housing uh, at some of their stations uh, with, with, a, with, a, with a goal of having 35% affordable housing uh, across the system. Uh, I'd be really in favor of that. And it could also be a revenue generator as well, as well as a spot of economic activity as well. So I'm definitely for it. And I would support anything that, uh, that would uh, take, take people out of cars uh, and, uh, and on their sneakers. Nice. Uh, and, and Liz, your, your response. So I saw this as a super commuter. The problem is the job housing imbalance. And I realize that people are not going home in the morning, they're going to work. So we need to build employment centers at the BART stations. Um, even our TOD policy promotes job centers within a quarter mile of the station because it generates the most ridership. And so the challenge is, if we build housing on a BART parking lot, that is not easily convertible to office. It's probably gonna be like that for a hundred years. And so we're really locking ourselves in. We're not diversifying our investment portfolio, so to speak. So I think we should really strive for the balance. The job housing can happen at BART, preferably. We decide to change our land use policy. So we're actually creating employment centers at the transit stations because that does generate the most ridership. And then I spearheaded this 
for years. Um, and now the Department of Housing and Community Development with the state has mandated San Francisco build 80,000 units in the next eight years because they have a job 17, one, 17 job to one household ratio. So that's the kind of thing I'm hoping to do, to see is this rebalancing of uses between jobs and housing. Thank you. Awesome, thank you very much. And I, I think, you know, one of the biggest concerns I think with being a BART board member is that you guys have the task, and we'll start with Liz. Um, there's a big task here between demands and constraints, uh, both philosophical, financial, uh, political, that are coming from different communities, including writers, operators, staff, the public, um, even, you know, Twitter fans. And the question I have is that, you know, how do you think a BART director, a BART director should balance all of these different considerations and being able to do their jobs effectively? Well, this is a complicated question because um, the demands and the constraints, um, you know, we get a lot of demands, there's a lot of politics going on uh, that push people to do certain things like this, this housing issue. Um, there was legislation passed saying that we need to build housing on the BART parking lots. And so to me, that's a constraint because we wanna build job centers. So this is the balance I'm trying to have with the community. We need a job housing balance and we need to create employment centers. Um, so I try to, I try to, to push for this new narrative when we have the demands and constraints kind of conflicting. And then, we, then I hear it from the riders. The riders say they want fair gates. Um, so that's, that wasn't favorable to the board in the, initially, but it became a priority because the community spoke out. So it is difficult. I think what we need to do is just focus on the top priorities which would be reliability, looking at the infrastructure that needs to be replaced and looking at the writer experience. I mean, if we just focus on the writer experience, I think those two, that, that, would, that would really help stop this division in, in priorities. All right, thank you very much. And Lance? Yeah, I mean, this is a great question. Thank you for it. I think one of the, the key things is to really understand the role uh, that the board plays uh, in, you know, in, in getting things done. And, um, you know, you talk about constraints. I, I think that, you know, we always are living in a world of constraints. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities. And, and, and a lot of times I think, you know, one of my strengths uh, is that I can take constraint. I, I, one of my strengths is that I can take things um, uh, that are constraining and I turn it around and, and turn it into an opportunity. So like, I, I, I'm, I'm famous for asking like, how might we, even though we can't do it this way, are there other ways that we can do it? Now, what's really important to know is what, what role do bar, uh, board members play in that? Uh, there's, a, there's a fair amount of um, committee work that is probably done. Uh, there's probably a fair amount of, um, you know, a, a, of collaboration with the rest of the board to drive consensus, right? And, and I think one of the things that, um, you know, that, that BART needs is, is um, the sense of, of, of collaboration uh, and, and, and discourse. Uh, and that's one thing that I hope to bring to the board. Thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate that. And, and so uh, again, if you guys have questions, please uh, use the question and answer function inside of the, uh, uh, the Zoom presentation. Um, and our last question, at least for now, is that because BART um, is an essential spine uh, connecting all of our communities together. Um, what can BART do uh, to encourage both seamlessness and connectivity between the district as well as its connecting transit agencies? And we'll start with Lance. Yeah, this is a great question. And one of the things that as I've done some research in this and, 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 and um, started thinking about how, because I, I do a fair amount of travel, and I have, you know, gone through uh, many public transit systems throughout the world, and I have actually seen uh, noticed that there is a level of seam seamlessness in in many uh, in man many places. One of the things is really around maybe network control, uh, being able to have like a, a you know coordinated times, coordinated fare schedules, um, being able to um, you know uh, you know 
create um, you know regional zones. That's one thing they they do in London, uh, just to make just make just to make things a lot clearer and simpler for the writers. Because really, this is all about removing friction and obstacles for writers, um, and uh, you know being able to have like one uh, you know one central control to be able to coordinate all of that across the different agencies like like ACE and you know but I'm ACE was one of the things that I used to uh, work on uh, from time to time or I used to travel on uh, and that was one of those things that coordination could definitely um, uh, improve so my time's up I've got more to say on that. In, in a quick follow-up to you um, and I'll pose the same question to Liz um, do you believe MTC is capable of uh, doing the the tasks necessary so that uh, the seamlessness and connectivity can be accomplished? Uh, capable, yes. Uh, whether or not it has the will to, that's a different question. And I think that, that is, that, uh, that's up to leaders like, uh, uh, you know, that, that's up to leaders like the board of directors, as well as the MTC leadership. Um, uh, and so is it capable? Are they capable? Yes. Um, uh, and, and, you know, but do they have the political uh, and, and, the, uh, and the financial will to do so? That's the real question that I think that we will have to pose. Thank you very much. And Liz, um, we'll start with the first question and then we'll allow for follow-up. Um, how would BART be able to, to encourage sinlessness and connectivity between the agencies? This is a huge question. Um, and I think the problem is, um, yes, we can coordinate our schedules. Yes, we can try to do a better job timing with the bus systems, but there's too many agencies. Um, there's uh, the, the problem is really is trying to consolidate these regional uh, transit agencies into um, a simpler, cohesive uh, transit program. So it would, if we had a simpler system, then we would have a, a, a transit manager that could make sure that, you know, the operations were under control, that we could time the buses to the trains. But we don't have this transit manager system. We have too many transit agencies. And I don't think MTC is capable of doing this because the problem is there's too much competition for resources. So the resources, meaning every county has a transportation tax, the tax project, the projects funded by the tax isn't coordinated between counties. And so I think the issue is the, comp the competition of resources needs to be reevaluated so that we don't have political decisions. Um, which is, is not creating the solutions that we need. And I was on mute, my apologies. And thank you, Liz, for, for your thoughtful question as well as you, Lance. Um, and friends, if you still have a moment, please answer, uh, feel free to put in the Q&A uh, any of your questions that you may have. Um, and it got me thinking because I'm a transit geek myself and, and transit is extremely important. Um, one of the things that, you know, come up that comes up often is in terms of affordability. We talked about that earlier in one of our earlier questions. Um, and I'll start with Liz here. Um, how would BART be able to make fares more affordable for marginalized riders uh, and the underserved communities that would depend on public transit? So I really think that we need to come up with a funding source to help with this because BART's in trouble. All the agencies are in trouble operationally. Um, so I, I would promote something that we would get maybe state surplus funds to help with a, a, a pilot pass program. Because right now we're, we're trying to help the, the folks that are at 200% federal poverty level, um, which is really low. I mean, so if you think about, you know, upping that like 400% of the poverty level, that's somebody who's making, I believe like 50,000, a person's making 50,000 a year. Um, that's the kind of incomes we could be targeting. This could be your students. This could be, you know, the, the workforce, the, the middle wage workforce that really needs to, to get incentivized to take transit. And it would be through this kind of innovative pilot program that Seamless Bay Area, I think, has studied at nauseum. I mean, that's very detailed. So I think that we could try to deploy this and it would help the missing middle, the workforce, and also the low income. Thank you. In in Lance, um, yeah. your thoughts. 
Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, Liz hit on a lot of it, and which is, um, but I mean, one of the things that uh, I'd really look for is, you know, maybe a federal or state block grants specifically for this. And then we, we can actually, um, you know, tie um, those ridership programs to those block grants for, for specific purposes. Um, and, and, and so um, that would be one thing. I, I would also like to continue uh, trying different pilots to see what works, because like I said, at the end of the day, yes, Obviously, we have to remain fiscally uh, fiscally solvent. The end game is because regardless of whether or not those trains are full or empty, they still cost the same amount of money to operate. So really, we want to get people on those trains to reap all the positive benefits. Uh, you know, and 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 one of the one of the difficult things about this uh, is that most of the folks that are identified in this question, uh, uh, they don't end on BART. Right, they, you know, they, they they end on a bus somewhere, right? And so, you know, what's really important is to make sure that you know whatever programs we do, um, you know, uh, uh, also optimize for those uh, for those local bus trend, um, those local bus connections as well. Okay, thank you very much. And and we have a question here in the chat um, in terms of consolidating agencies in order to accomplish the, uh, the, the long game of seamless timing and fares. And so to both candidates, um, is the consolidation possible? How would you work towards that if you were, um, uh, elected as BART director? And we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Lance. Yeah. I mean, is it possible? I don't know it's kind of tough because there's there's um, you know uh, so much needs to be done to uh, you know, to 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 um, uh, to realize this. I mean, if you ever tried to redistrict, you know, an agency or or something like that, just just even the idea of redistricting is very is very challenging. So, um, you know, for example, in Union City, we have Union City Transit. And I've always, you know, I've always been, uh, you know, a, a little, uh, you know, I've always questioned why why Union City has its own uh, has its own transit, um, and so there are very specific reasons why uh, that exists, and a lot of it has to do with funding, a lot of it has to do with autonomy, um, but I think ultimately we, you know, uh, for a director or whomever it's, or or staff to be successful, it would have to be a lot of you'd have to start off with some very tough conversations, uh, but we would need to keep our eyes on the prize. And the eyes on the prize is simplification uh, for our for our, for our writers. All right, thank you. And, and Liz? Well, I think it's inevitable. We need to have consolidation. It's really about putting the writers first. I even think that's one of the principles of seamless transit. <laughs> um, so, Putting the writers first, meaning we really want to simplify. We want to we want to merge agencies. I can see AC Transit merging with you know BART, um, maybe Caltrain merging with BART. I know this sounds terribly complicated right now, but I think we need to have these conversations because there's efficiencies gained by coordinating. If you're in charge of the train systems and some bus systems, you can coordinate better. You're you're one agency. Um, and I think that would that would make that would make a huge difference as far as you know coordination and also maybe possibly reducing operating costs. Maybe not a huge amount, but really it's putting the rider first. And I think these conversations need to happen. In order to do this, I would I really would form a task force that would supplement you know what Seamless Bay Area is doing, and uh, work through MTC to analyze these scenarios and possibly put them on the ballot. Would, um, so that would elicit a question that just popped up in my head. Uh, would you, as if you were selected BART director, uh, would you be in support of a possible regional measure to support transit and or housing? And I'll would, start with Liz. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, if there was agency consolidation, I would support a regional measure. Um, and then the housing component, yes, I think, but the, again, I'm pushing for a housing job balance and the housing and community development for the state of California was mandated to do the balancing and put housing where the jobs are. And so this happened to San Francisco. They basically was almost like an audit, but I mean, this department told San Francisco they need to build 80,000 homes 
because of their job housing imbalance. And I think that's really the best way to go. Um, I, I, would put, I would put a focus on job centers at BART stations. I think that's another big game changer for the riders experience or going to work and the, the less commute time, the less distance, the, the rider is going to appreciate this to disperse the job centers along the BART line. Um, so I would promote that and also this affordability, the PASS program. If there was a regional measure, I would support this maybe a daily, weekly, monthly, unlimited ride pass program, geographically based. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Lance, to you, sir. Can I ask you please to restate the question? I want to make sure that I get it all. Uh, yes, I will, I will try. Um, so we were talking about um, getting the political will to you know, support consolidation. Um, and then we kind of went to this direction towards a, a possible regional measure in the future that would be able to support transit and or housing funding, would you be able, would you support something like that? Yeah, I, I would, I, I would definitely support it. And, and I, and I think, you know, we always as leaders have to go back on the principles and, and, and the, the key guiding principles here are, you know, to do what's right for our, 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 for, for our riders. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, could, because somebody who's riding on BART and then transfers to AC transit is the same rider. There's not a BART rider. AC transit rider, wheels rider. No, it's an individual person. And that person needs to be able to move through the system uh, flawlessly and or seamlessly. And so, uh, you know, the fewer brands and pay rates and transitions that they need to make, the better. And so I, I, I would definitely be uh, in favor of it. Uh, the devil always, however, is in the details and the funding allocation uh, and, 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 uh, and the governance structure. Uh, but fundamentally, I'm 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 uh, I'm down to support it, uh, and but really got to dig into those details. Right on, and, and thank you very much. And so let me put on my my optimism cap on, uh, Lance. I'll pose this final question to you. Um, what do you see are opportunities for Bard in the future? Uh, we've been basically in shelter in place for almost oh, pretty close to 900 days. Um, what do you see are opportunities that BART can be able to seize in this new normal? Well, what's really interesting is that, you know, th this, um, you know, we, we are celebrating the 50th, you know, the, the, the 50th uh, birthday, 50th anniversary. Um, and, you know, I, there are so, you know, when people ask me, because people all the time are wondering, like, why are you so optimistic about BART, you know, and I have to navigate all of the negativity to come back to looking at the big picture. Like the big picture is, yeah, we've got some trains that are a little outdated right now, but you know, it's not going to be long before we start rolling out some of the, you know, some of the newer trains. So I think, uh, you know, and you know, we've got new stations down in 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 um, in uh, Berryessa and Milpitas, uh, you know. So we're actually, you know, uh, we're on a great trajectory right now. So it's really easy to get kind of caught up in the th the things that aren't working, but really, transit is for everybody. Transit uh, delivers freedom of mobility to everybody, and that's why it's so important, right? It, it is it's it's the thing that allows people to get to work. It allows people to um, you know to to feed their kids, and you know I, I'm I'm for all of the things that for uh, that are for all of the people. Thank you, and and Liz, question to you, um, putting in your optimism hat. Uh, what opportunities do you see for Bart in the future? Well, I advocated in DC to at BART to San Jose, get the funding to get to San Jose. This is a huge game changer. I mean, the, getting BART to San Jose at Deardon, that's where, you know, you can take Amtrak down to Southern California. You can take Caltrain around the peninsula. There's Capitol Corridor going through there to Sacramento. And also you've got ACE. I mean, that goes to San Joaquin County. So this, this is a huge improvement um, to get BART to San Jose. And then I would say, that with optimism, that, I mean, that's going to obviously increase ridership, but we still are not capturing these other super commuters that are driving. And I really hope that we get a regional bus network from San Joaquin County to Yolo County, all the way into Santa Clara County, into these job centers, and even into San Francisco. Um, we've got to get folks out of their cars. And a lot of folks don't have, a, there's no rail on 680. I mean, that goes into 205 into San Joaquin. So yes, there's ACE. But a lot of folks, um, 
don't take ACE and it's not convenient. So I would say regional bus system and getting BART to San Jose. And I'm optimistic we can capture these new riders because we lost them. We lost a lot with telecommuting. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us tonight in, in these awesome questions and answers um, that's added to this conversation. I hope you guys feel better informed about the important issues that are in stake. Um, and to wrap up the event, because we are running out of time and we want to make sure that we cut it close to an hour, um, I'd like to invite Liz and Lance to give a short one minute concluding statement to wrap up tonight's forum. Uh, Liz, if you will. Well, thank you. Uh, this has been an honor to be part of this discussion. I think the folks that are hosting this event are really leaders in their own rights, trying to get consolidation of transit agencies. That wasn't my idea. That was seamless Bay Area. So, uh, and all of you folks actually that, that are hosting this. Um, but I would say I'm a proven leader. I actually, as a planning commissioner, asked to have Union City BART as a downtown station. It became an intermodal station. For the last four years, I, I advocated for a job housing balance, and now San Francisco might be building, well, knock on wood, they might be building their fair share of housing. And I really was a proponent of trying to get BART to San Jose. I think the, the funding for this, the vision for that, um, I really, you know, I really think that we got the biggest grant in the history of BART because it was such a great idea, and I really advocated for this concept. Um, Maybe it was a no-brainer to some agencies, but I think a lot of people didn't realize this. And so I feel like I'm a leader um, and I talk about things that people may not want to be challenged with. So thank you. Thank you. And Lance, uh, one minute to you, sir. Yeah. When, when, when I was asked to, you know, uh, when, when I was really like looking at this opportunity uh, to run for BART, you know, one of the things that really was clear to me is that, well, you know, I'm a I'm a transit, you know, uh, transit advocate. Uh, I'm a bit of a transit nerd. Um, a couple of friends of mine, we used to always, you know, um, talk about different routes and connections. And so I thought I was a, I thought I was a transit nerd. And then I went to Seamless Bay Area and I, I, then I leaned in and I read other, whoa, I just barely scratched the surface. So there's so much more to do. There's so much more to contribute. And so um, what I'd really love to do is just, you know, to lean in a little bit more and take your mission because your I, I read your mission and I was like, these are all the things that I'd want to do too. Uh, it's actually very inspirational. Uh, so please um, join me, um, you know, several members of the BART Board of Directors, Fremont leaders, um, you know, all of the Union City City Council is backing me, several leaders in, um, in, um, uh, in Newark uh, are supporting uh, my run. Uh, please join them. Learn more at Lance, the number four, Bart.org. I appreciate your support. I think you're muted. Or is that me? Dave, Dave you are muted. 900 days in, in Zoom, and I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, the irony of it all. Uh, thank you, Adina. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you guys for making the time to attend the candidate forum tonight. Um, and once again, I'd like to thank our event co-hosts of Seamless Bay Area, East Bay Transit Riders Union, Transport Oakland, Spur, Bike East Bay, Fremont for Everyone, Streets for People, and East Bay Yimby. Um, in Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, transit month. Uh, we are halfway done with it. Um, and this weekend in particular is going to be packed with events, such as on Friday, uh, 11 transit general managers and CEOs are going to be doing a ride along for a happy hour. Uh, this Saturday, you could be, be able to take part in a rally in the East Bay um, or BART to bike ride along the MLK shoreline. And then on Sunday, there's also going to be a ride along in a rally in downtown San Mateo. Um, so if you want more information about September being Transit Month here in the Bay Area, you can visit transitmonth.org for more event details, and hopefully that we'll be able to see you there. Um, I want to thank you all for the time and energy. Uh, Liz and Lance, thank you. Uh, very much for being here tonight. Um, and friends, please uh, take transit safely and we'll see you on the bus. Thank you, or BART rather. Uh, have a wonderful evening and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.